Hi, and welcome to another episode of Photoshop for Lightroom users. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Camera Raw to create your own custom presets. Now, presets are a great way of being able to apply a custom style to images very quickly and very easily. So I'm going to show you how you can take the skills that you've covered inside Lightroom and how we can move those out into Photoshop and start creating our own custom presets. We'll also take a look at where they're located, how to load them in, and how to share them out with anybody else you may want to. So without further ado, let's just jump over into Photoshop and take a look at how we can do all of that right now. So I fired up Photoshop, opened up an image ready to start editing. So let's go through the process now of editing this image, getting a nice look that we like, and then we want to sort of apply that to multiple different images. Well, let's take a look at how we can save this as a preset inside Photoshop. Now to be able to create presets inside Photoshop, we need to go and do that inside the Adobe Camera Raw editor. To access that, we simply come to the filter option and come down and choose Camera Raw Filter. Once we've done that, that'll open up the Camera Raw editor or Adobe Camera Raw, and then we can start editing. Now, if you've never used this view, I'd highly recommend checking out my video that I've done to cover this that will take you through how this interface works and how you can take your Lightroom skills over from Lightroom and bring them into Photoshop and start working inside Adobe Camera Raw. However, if you're already used to working with Adobe Camera Raw, we'll just jump straight over and take a look at how we can create these presets. So with the image open, let's go make a couple of tweaks to get this where we kind of like it before we save that preset out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and we're going to choose the camera options and we're going to come in and just do a very quick basic edit and set this to a sort of orange and teal look. So we're just going to grab the blue primary, bring that right the way down. We're going to grab the hue on the red primary, push that up to around about there. Let's bring the hue down a little bit. That's a little bit crazy on the blue primary. Let's say around about, around about that kind of point. Let's make a couple of other basic edits to this. Let's just say we'll jump into the tone curve and we'll crush the blacks on there to give it a sort of Instagram stylized look. Just grab that, lift that up, bring the contrast up a little bit in the mid-tones, and we'll say, okay, we're happy with that. We've got it where we want it to be. Now, what we need to do to save this as a preset is jump over to the very final tab, which is the presets tab. Now you can see I've already created a couple of presets in there and if I select those it'll automatically apply those changes to the image and overwrite the existing changes we made or add them depending upon what changes we select. Now if you're used to working with presets in Lightroom this is going to be very very familiar. All we need to do is come down to the bottom, got a little option in there to create a new preset. So let's click on that, that'll open up a dialog box that allows us to name this and specify what settings are going to be saved and what settings are going to be used for this particular preset. Now the thing to bear in mind is when you're creating a preset, you can if you want to leave all these options checked whether you've made a change to them or not. Problem with that is you kind of limit yourself. If you say, for example, don't do anything with the tone curve, and then you click to say that you want to apply the tone curve, any changes you may make to the image, then when you place this preset on top, will overwrite that, even though you may not have made any changes inside the preset. Kind of hope that makes sense. So only check the options that you want to save as part of the preset. Anything that's not used, uncheck it, because what that's going to do is it's going to give you a blank canvas not to overwrite any preset changes you made previously. So for this example, let's just uncheck all of these. So we'll say check none. We're going to give this a title and we're going to call this orange and teal. So we've given it a name. Now all we need to do is go through and specify which parameters we want to save as part of this preset. So we know we did the point curve. So we'll just check that. We also did we did the camera calibration. So we'll check that. Everything else was left off. So we've made no changes to anything else. So if we now save that, only those make up the preset. Anything else we may change, like the white balance exposure and so on, won't be affected by this preset. So let's click OK on there, and you can see now that's created our preset on the right-hand side. So if we go and choose a different preset, for example, the Band of Brothers one, you can see that now applies all the different settings that I had on there. If we go to the Retro Summer Glow, you can see that sets the settings on there. Now if we select Orange and Teal, that applies the settings on there. Very quick and easy. Now, let's go and take a look at this. If we jump over to the basic panel, you'll see that there are some changes in there that we didn't make. That's because any of the presets we've chosen haven't saved out those particular different settings. So anything that was changed will stay in there. So if we just reset these back to the zero points, so everything is put back to exactly where it was 
when the picture was imported. So if we go back and take a look, let's go and choose the orange and teal look again. So we've now selected that preset, jump back over to the basics, you can see nothing has changed in there. If we come back over and choose the retro summer glow, which has changed other settings as part of the preset, you can see things change. If we jump back over, you can see all those alterations are called back up. So this is why it's important to ensure that you only check the boxes that you want to affect the image as part of the preset you create. That's really all there is to creating presets inside Photoshop. You can save them, you can export them, you can share them around. It's all very simple, very straightforward. Now, obviously, if you're a Lightroom user, you'll notice if we take a look at the presets, we don't have the option to group these together. We kind of just have everything bundled in one location. That's one negative you kind of find with dealing with Adobe Camera Raw as opposed to dealing with Lightroom. The organizational options inside Lightroom are far superior, and I hope it's something they bring into Photoshop at a later date to make sure we kind of have a lot of that functionality carried over into Big Brother Photoshop that we have in Lightroom. So now that we've created a preset and saved that, how do we access our presets to share them or back them up or do anything else? Well, it's very, very simple. All we need to do is come up to the top right-hand corner of this little preset section, click on there. You can see we've got a range of different options available. If we come down to load settings, you'll see that will open up the location of the presets that we've created and show you all the presets that are in there. Now you can see the XMP files, they're just basically data files that have a list of preset settings applied. And now that you know where these are stored on your computer, you can simply drag and drop to copy those, or you can drag in new presets that you shared, downloaded, or created, and you want to sort of just drop those into a new copy of Photoshop. That's really all there is to it. Hopefully you found this very easy to work with, and that the skills and techniques that you picked up inside Lightroom can transition over into Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop very quickly and very painlessly. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.